Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some more Pittsburgh Steelers breakdown and analysis. Today I want to talk about Trey Norwood, a second year safety that, you know, usually we think about second year players, sophomore players, they take that leap. Unfortunately for Norwood, he took a step back from where I think he was at his rookie year, and if I could really pinpoint one reason why Norwood struggled in 2022, it was his tackling, which granted was never a strong suit of his when he came out of Oklahoma, but I think it really regressed even more so in 2022 compared to 2021. In 2023, there are going to be some opportunities for a role in slot corner sub package with some of the departures, Arthur Millette, Terrell Edmonds, uh, Cam Sutton being gone, but for Norwood to A, make this team, and B, have a defensive role and impact, he's going to have to clean up his tackling. Let's go through some of those misses that he had last year. We'll start here week four against the New York Jets. Here is Trey Norwood. And again, I'll, I'll try to remember to put the spotlights on so you guys know exactly where he's at. But Norwood, the free safety, the post safety on this play over route. Garrett Wilson predictably beating Arthur Millette. And you see Norwood miss that tackle in space. And Minka has to be the one to clean things up after a 35-yard gain. Part of the Jets' second half comeback. And to me, probably the worst loss Pittsburgh suffered last season but more to the point on Norwood again it's tough in space trying to you know tackle one of the you know probably better young receivers in football in Garrett Wilson but when you're that free safety you're that post safety you got to be the guy that can make that tackle in space Millette misses too so Norwood you know hardly alone on this play but had it not been for Minka being able to come back and rally as he's kind of playing this robber coverage as they rotate and roll him down um, you see Nora just all arm, no wrap, and trying to do that in space against a pretty, you know, fairly big receiver in Garrett Wilson. You're not going to have success that way. Let's go to the following week against the Buffalo Bills, and here is Trey Norwood aligned as the safety on this play opposite Minka Fitzpatrick. Here you're going to get Arthur Millette on a nickel blitz, and so to, you know, replace and cover number two, the slot receiver here, Norwood is going to spin down. RPO here for Buffalo, and... Uh, Norwood just misses that tackle trying to come downhill. And again, you know, that, that nickel corner is going to replace. Your safety is going to come down. Uh, you better be able to make that tackle in space, essentially elongated run game type stuff at RPO game. And you see Norwood not able to wrap up again and miss that tackle. And it turns into a seven-yard gain. So he's there. He's in position, uh, maybe a little late to, to get downhill. Um, again, it's a, I know it can be difficult to do, but these are plays these guys have to make. That's his assignment here. And maybe I think he broke down a little bit too early here. Yes, you want to come to balance, but I think he broke down a bit too early. And so whenever the receiver made his move and cut to the inside, Nord really wasn't in position to push and drive and really ever make any sort of real contact with the receiver. So I think he broke down a little bit too early. He should run through, drive through, and wrap in this situation as opposed to him kind of breaking down right there with still a good four yards of space there. That gives that receiver way too much time to be able to make a move and get upfield. Week six against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And again, here is Norwood as the free safety on this play. Mika Fitzpatrick had missed this game. And overall, Pittsburgh secondary did well. They had so many injuries in this one. Guys like Josh Jackson, James Pierre stepped up. And overall, it was a good defensive game against Tom Brady. But you see Norwood at the end of the screen pass to the running back, Leonard Fournette, maybe just a well, swing screen. The linemen don't pull, but the receivers are blocking. Point is, you're going to watch Norwood here fall off of Fournette at the end as he gets his way into the end zone again. Norwood, not the only culprit on this play. Spillane misses the tackle. I understand that, you know, Fournette's a big power back. It's not going to be easy to bring these guys down, but you're going to have to do it in the NFL, some of these big backs out in space. And, you know, I just don't like the, te the uh, technique here, throwing a shoulder into him. Norwood being a smaller guy, bigger guy, in Fournette, the running back. That's not going to get the job done. Just trying to put a, a casual shoulder. Um, be sure to, to wrap up and follow through upon that. And Fournette gets his way into the end zone. We can take a look at it from the aerial view as well. Norwood right here. Free safety, post safety. Again, not not the only issue. Probably shouldn't have got to this point where Norwood has to even really, you know, impact the play. But you're just not seeing good, consistent technique. And the frame's not big enough where he's not going to have the hit power of an Edmonds, for example. Even Minka Fitzpatrick to get the job done that way. Next game against the Miami Dolphins and a missed tackle here on Mike Gusecki. And so you're seeing Nord miss tackles repeatedly. He wasn't playing a ton of snaps the first half of the year. Played a good bit against Tampa Bay because of the injuries. But you're seeing him really stack and never have a game where he can kind of get away without a missed tackle. And so 
Um, where I believe this was a third down play and Pittsburgh does get off the field and that's all well and good. Again, just showing examples of the many missed tackles that Norwood has had um, throughout, you know, fairly limited reps in 2022. So on Gusecki here, just not being able to wrap and drive and finish. The technique here isn't as bad. You're seeing this, um, you know, same foot, same shoulder technique, but he's kind of slipping and he's not really able to drive and create power. I know Gesicki obviously is twice the size of Nord, but when you're a safety, you're tackling all kinds. You're tackling receivers in space. You're taking on running backs to fill the alley. You're taking on tight ends when you're rolling down and you're buzzing to the flat. So, you know, as a safety, it's pretty common. You're not going to be the bigger guy in the fight when you're tackling somebody. You got big receivers, big move tight ends, uh, big running backs that can, you know, function well and run and play in space. You better be able to overcome that. Minka Fitzpatrick. I think his most underrated skill is his tackling. It is so consistent. And guess who makes the tackle here? In part, it's Minka Fitzpatrick. So just seeing the word, you know, again, the slider frame, the lack of technique, like lack of power, really in these situations where he's going against somebody bigger than him, which is most of the time he's not able to get the job done. A little bit later in the season against the Indianapolis Colts, and by this point, after the bye, once DeMonte Casey came back, Nord basically did not play defensive snaps. He was still active, still played on special teams. That's what we're looking at here, but he essentially had no role defensively. And again, some of that is probably pre-planned because of Casey's return, but also I think Nord just was not playing that well to justify giving him snaps. And even on special teams, you saw missed tackles there. So to check out this kick return or kick coverage play against the Colts, and the Colts had a couple of long runbacks. They had the big one to start the second half that you know helped get them back into that game. Nowhere didn't do anything wrong on, on that example, but watching him here, and I, and I have the spotlight, and I'll, I'll kind of run this thing back just to show you guys Nowhere down here. That's going to be, uh, what do they call that, R4? I always get mixed up on if this R5 or R1, but you see Nowhere here, um, again, throwing that shoulder, not wrapping up, and predictably missing a tackle. And what could have been, you know, a stop around, uh, what's that, about the 25-yard line, I think. You get an extra 10, 12 yards run after after that. And so Norwood just too high, throwing the shoulder, not going to be the way he wins. He's not going to be a, a hitter, a power guy. He's going to have to be technical and wrap up. And so what should have been a stop around the 25, return man gets out to the 34-yard line. So an extra nine yards gain there, just not good enough to give that team really good field position. I know this year with the kickoff fair catch rule that just got passed, Less of an issue. You're going to see even fewer kick returns. Um, by the way, here is Nor- Norwood right here. Throwing that shoulder, missing pretty badly. Um, but just to the principle, whether it's special teams work, defensive work, the theme I thought in 2022 for Norwood was missed tackles. We'll look at one more. Another kick coverage, kick return situation for the Steelers. Here is Norwood to the top of the screen. Again, spotlighted in another missed tackle that leads to another successful run back for the Colts. So we'll get this one started. Keep an eye on Norwood up here. Just missing the tackle. Not throwing the shoulder this time. Just, you know, Returman is able to step out of it. Norwood, you know, good contain initially, but coming off the block, just can't finish the play. And again, it's another strong run back out to the 40-41 yard line. Cannot give NFL offenses, even ones as porous as the Colts were last year that kind of field position it's just asking too much your defense so we'll take a look at it from the end zone view in just a moment but you know, everything's right here until the finish and of course you can't finish the play that's really all people remember not about your initial technique and so we'll look at it from the aerial view and there is norwood right here and you're going to see him come down and uh, come off the block here and miss that tackle you know basically Return being able to high step out of it and it becomes what should be. And, you know, I don't know, it's still going to be a decent return out to the, you know, 30 something yard line ends up going out past the 40. And that just is not going to endear yourself well to Danny Smith. Our Josh Carney for Steelers Depot tracks the weekly missed tackle report. And he had Nord for the season for 2022 with a team high 11 missed tackles, including three of them against Tampa Bay, two on special teams you just saw against the Colts and really that all came besides the Colts game basically in the first half of the season because he wasn't playing nearly as much had his defensive snap total basically eliminated after the bye when KZ came back so for Norwood there are chances to play this year 60B work 
slot work on passing downs, although Chandon Sullivan seems to be starting out there. Duke Dawson could be in the mix as well. I think for Norwood, he's a guy in danger of making this roster when you have Neal. Casey comes back. Killebrew is a strong and core special teams guy. He's not a lock either, but he's a more defined type player. Nord is going to have to be a much better tackler this year. If he can't be, he will not be a stealer in 2023. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you guys for watching and we'll talk to you soon.